Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. If we haven't met, I'm Justin with ExcelSmith. If you've been here before, we're excited to have you back. In this video, we'll build an equation using the filter function to show only the rows containing blank values in one of the columns. For an introduction to the filter function, click the pop-out in the top right corner or the link in the description below. Once we've built our base equation, we'll improve upon it to provide more flexibility and a better formatted output. Sure, we could achieve similar results using the built-in filtering option, but where's the fun in that? Big fancy equations are always more exciting. Let's get started. Our data set in columns A through D is a simple report showing transaction information, including ID, date, email address, and amount. Our goal is to create a filtered report in columns F through I that shows which transactions are missing an email address. Additionally, we want our data filtered to show only these transactions that fall between April 15th and May 15th inclusive. First, we'll build an equation using the filter function that simply filters just the missing email addresses. In cell F6, type an equal sign, the function name filter, and an open parentheses. The first parameter of filter is the range we want to filter. For this example, we want to return values for all the columns in the dataset. This means we need to select the entire report, which is the range A6 through D25. We don't need to include the header row from the raw data. Next, type a comma to go to the second parameter. This parameter tells the filter function which rows to include. We do this by building a conditional statement that evaluates for each row of the dataset. For our conditional statement, we want to check whether or not an email address is blank. To accomplish this, we can use the isBlank function. After the comma, type isBlank followed by an open parentheses. The filter function will evaluate the isBlank function for however many rows are passed into it. Since we want to check the email addresses for all of our rows, we'll enter the range C6 through C25. isBlank only needs one parameter, so we're good typing a closing parentheses. Type a comma to go to the last parameter of the filter function. Here, we tell filter what to return if there are no values that meet the criteria set in the second parameter. This can be anything you'd like, but for our example, we'll simply enter a dash between two quotes. While this parameter is optional, I find it good practice to always enter something. We've completed our initial equation. Type a closing parentheses and press enter to see the results. We've successfully completed the first portion of the request. Well done, give yourself a pat on the back. If you're getting value from this video, let us know by pressing those like and subscribe buttons. It helps the channel and is greatly appreciated. Notice the equation returns zeros in column H instead of empty cells like in the raw data in column C. Don't worry, we'll get to this shortly. Before addressing the zeros, the next portion of our use case is to restrict the results to the date range April 15th through May 15th inclusive. I've included these dates in cells G1 and G2. We could include them directly in the equation, but I prefer keeping them separate. This provides easier control if we need to change them or if we need other equations to use the same information. To add the date restrictions, first select cell F6. Next, place the cursor after the closing parentheses of the isBlank function. We need the second parameter of the filter function to return true for any row that has a blank email address and is between April 15th and May 15th. To accomplish this, we will multiply our isBlank function by another conditional. Start by typing an asterisk. Next, type in open parentheses. Then, select the date range from our dataset. For the first comparison, we're checking which dates in column B are greater than or equal to the beginning date value in cell G1. To do this, type a greater than sign followed by an equal sign, and then select cell G1. After selecting G1, type a closing parentheses. This completes the first half of the date check. Next, we need to identify which dates are less than the ending date in cell G2. Again, start by typing an asterisk since we need to continue with multiplication to ensure a value of true is returned only when all three checks are true. Like the previous check, we'll start with an open parentheses followed by the dates in column B. This time, we need to enter a less than sign followed by an equal sign. Finally, select cell G2. To wrap this up, type a closing parentheses. Before pressing enter, let's walk through the second parameter. The first portion, the isBlank function, will return true for any blank email values. The second portion checks which dates, if any, are greater than or equal to the beginning date in cell G1. The third section checks to see which dates are less than or equal to the ending date in cell G2. For this entire parameter to return true for a given row, each of these three checks has to evaluate to true for that given row. If any of the checks return false, the entire row returns false. This means that row will not be included in the equation's output. Go ahead and press enter to see the results. 
Our equation successfully returns all rows missing an email address that also has a transaction date between April 15th and May 15th inclusive. Pretty cool, huh? The last thing we need to do is to get rid of those annoying zeros in column H. I want our filtered data set to have empty cells for the email addresses, just like their corresponding rows in the raw data set. What we need is a way to tell our equation to return a blank value for any zeros while keeping the results of the equation unchanged for any non-zero values. Put another way, if our formula equals zero, return an empty string. Otherwise, return the value of our equation. We could accomplish our goal by using just an if statement, but we would have to enter our filter function for both the first and third parameters. This would get quite long and messy. Fortunately, we can level up our equation by utilizing the let function. The let function lets us establish variables and their values and then use these variables within the equation. To see this in action, let's first drag down the formula bar to give us more vertical space. When using the let function, I like to separate the parameters onto different lines to help with readability. After the equal sign, but before the function name filter, type the function name let followed by an open parentheses. The first parameter is where we set the name of our variable. For this example, I'm simply going to enter the name filtered list. Next, type a comma to go to the second parameter. This parameter sets the value for the variable we defined in the first parameter. Instead of leaving the second parameter on the same line, I prefer to enter a line break by pressing either Alt and Enter on a PC or Option and Enter on a Mac. This line break doesn't change the functionality of the equation, it simply makes things more readable by separating the components onto different lines. In addition to placing the different parameters on their own lines, I also like to indent them to show a sense of relational hierarchy. Personally, I enter four spaces. You can enter however many looks good to you. The second parameter is simply the filter function we built previously. This means we can enter a comma at the end of the equation, followed by another line break and indention, to move to the last parameter, which is where we will use the variable we established in the first parameter. This is where we will enter the if function we walked through earlier. Start by typing the function name if, followed by an open parentheses. The first parameter is what we want to check. In our scenario, we want to know if the result of filtered list is equal to zero. Notice that as I start typing the variable name, I get a pop-up that contains the variable name. Go ahead and use the down arrow key to highlight it, followed by the tab key to select it. Next, we need to complete the comparison by typing an equal sign and the number zero. After the zero, type a comma to go to the second parameter of the if function. This is where we establish what we want returned for any values that equal zero in the filter function. Type two quotes to return an empty string. Next, type another comma to go to the last parameter. If the value in the filter function does not equal zero, we want to return the filter function. To do this, simply enter the variable name again. This is the power of the let function. By using a variable name, the if function is much shorter and easier to read compared to entering the entire filter equation in both the first and third parameters. Type a closing parentheses to complete the if function. Before typing the closing parentheses for the let function, again, enter a line break. I prefer to type my closing parentheses without indention on its own line. This helps me to keep track of which parentheses go with which function. Again, the line breaks and indention don't change the functionality of the equation. It simply makes it easier to read and troubleshoot. Type the last closing parentheses and then press enter to see the results. That's much better. We have the same results as before, but the email column now has an empty string to better match the blank values in the source data. In this video, we utilize the powerful feature of checking multiple criteria with the filter function. This can allow for some pretty complex comparisons. Check out this video to learn more about how this works and to see additional examples of this in action. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.